Hi, my name is Ashna Sehgal and I am the founder of Shop India. I recently got registered with Datri as a blood stem cell donor. What is Datri? So Datri is a not-for-profit organization that's actively working towards creating a big database of mud donors who can potentially save somebody who's suffering or is diagnosed with an acute blood disorder. Today, we are at the Rajiv Gandhi Cancer Institute in Delhi and we're going to have a conversation with Dr. Dinesh Burani, who is one of the leading hematologists in India and credited with the maximum number of mud transplants in North India. I'd like to start off by expressing how me and Datri, both of us, are so grateful for you to find the slot in your extremely busy schedule and I'm sure this video is going to help people understand the severity of blood disorders in India and how important it is for these patients to find matches. Say you're meeting patients on a daily basis, right? What do you think is the current scenario of these blood, blood disorders in India? We in hematology started a bit later than the western world. Uh, so we were slightly uh, behind them. In cities, we are getting close to them. Uh, we have many facilities will be as far to the western world. In rural areas, there's still the facilities are lacking. The the train trained the availability of the trained staff is lacking. But more and more people will get trained and more more facilities will come up into the rural areas. So probably we should be able to reach there sooner. So do you think it's genetic? Like people diagnosed with disorders like AML, say, or thalassemia. You think what is what is the chance or the probability of it passing on to the next generation? Uh, we divide the blood disorders into the two groups. One is a malignant, one is a non-malignant. The majority of the malignant disorders are not genetic. So someone has a cancer, I mean blood cancer, it doesn't pass to the, the, the subsequent uh, generations. When, when we are talking of the non-malignant disorders like thalassemia, which is definitely a genetic. If the parents are thalassemia minor, then only the child can get a thalassemia major. So, some of the non-malignant disorders, the blood disorders are genetic. Majority of the, the malignant disorders, the cancers are non-genetic. So, what you're trying to say is that AML is, is non -genetic. not genetic and thalassemia is genetic. Correct. All right. So, I read an article where it was mentioned that every year in India, over 10,000 new cases of thalassemia are registered and making India the thalassemia capital of the world. Why do you think that majority of these thalassemic patients are Indians only? The many of the countries have a very effective preventive program. So, you can prevent the birth of a thalassemic child. So the majority of the Western countries have implemented the, uh, the diagnosing the, the thalassemia minor parents before the birth of the child. Uh, we are significantly lacking in the prevention program. So we have a, uh, the number of children with thalassemia born are quite high. And the, the, obviously the, the population is high. The people with the genetic susceptibility of thalassemia, the thalassemia is in India, so that's why we get a more number of people, the number of patients born per year, if you compare with the western, uh, of the other part of the world, is higher. Okay. How can we detect and thereby prevent thalassemia? It's very simple. If you uh, uh, do a test, it's called the hemoglobin HPLC. So the, all the people, the, people, the child, the bearing or the before the marriage, all people should have that test done. So we need an awareness that uh, thalassemia is prevalent in India. Uh, the, mo the problem is that people are asymptomatic. When you have thalassemia minor, you don't have any problem. So people don't think that they can have thalassemia minor. So the, the majority of people are not coming up front to get this very cheap test of hemoglobin HPLC. When the, the, get, the, when the lady gets pregnant, the gynecologist has to do this hemoglobin HPLC for everyone to find out whether the both the, the both the parents are thalassemia minor or not. By doing this simple test on the general population, especially on the specific uh, ethnic groups and the, patient, the people who are all are pregnant should have this test. If we do this kind of awareness that anyone who is not symptomatic still can be thalassemia minor. And we must get this test done to prevent the birth of the thalassemia major. We can prevent it. All right. What would you say are the symptoms of somebody who is suffering from who's diagnosed with thalassemia? 
when we say thalassemia there are three types one is a minor so all the parents who have the, the kid with the thalassemia major are minor they don't have any symptoms they they just have a hemoglobin about 9 9.5 10 even sometimes a normal hemoglobin but the test will tell you whether you have thalassemia minor or not that's a hplc hemoglobin uh, so that's why the, the, the thalassemia minor is asymptomatic. You do not require any symptom. But when the major child is born, the thalassemia major, the child doesn't make any hemoglobin. When the, the, uh, the, uh, the hemoglobin from the mother goes off at the age of three to six months, they, they, they are with the low hemoglobin and they require a transfusion. They require the blood transfusion for lifelong. So they are dependent on the outside uh, blood. That's a major. Some people are in between, they require a blood sometime, that's called the intermediate. Uh, that's how you, so the, the diagnosis of Thal major comes when the child starts growing and his hemoglobin goes down, he, he becomes irritable, he, he becomes lethargy, he doesn't eat and when you check your hemoglobin and you find the hemoglobin has gone down to 6 or 7. Do we have a treatment for somebody who has been diagnosed with thalassemia? Uh, thalassemia uh, major, unfortunately, the only curative treatment is bone marrow transplant. Otherwise, you have to be on the blood transfusion and removing the iron for lifelong. And the life span is reduced because of the uh, regular transfusion and iron. So, the treatment is there, it's not available to everyone. It uh, is a curative treatment is bone marrow transplant. So, like you said, somebody who has been diagnosed with thalassemia has to undergo a blood stem cell transplant. What is it? Like, is it come some kind of surgery that needs to be performed on the patient? The, we, we are taking the some stem cells from the blood of the donor, which needs to be achelinized, and then implanting like a seed into the body of the thalassemia major. And then with the medicines, we are allowing this uh, seed to become a plant. So it's not a surgery, it's a, probably it's a medical treatment, taking the stem cells from the donor, and implanting into the, the recipient. So you inject it? We are giving it as a transfusion. So where do these patients go to find a donor? And can their family members be the donors? So the first of the donor can be your sibling. So we do a test, it's called the Achille test. If we have a 100% match with the sibling, which is only a 30% chance you can be actually match with your sibling, uh, so then the sibling becomes a donor. If you don't have a donor, then we go for the registries. There are many registries in our country. There is a, our indigenous registry is a Tatri, where we go for looking for a donor. And uh, if you have a 100% match donor, you can have an unrelated donor transplant with a similar success for thalassemia. So 70% of the patients, we may have to go to Dhatri and look for the donor. So we need this transplant only for patients who are diagnosed with thalassemia or is it common for all other blood disorders? Thalassemia, aplastic anemia, sickle cell anemia and all the kind of a blood cancers. How can these registries like Dhatri and hospitals like Rajiv Gandhi can work together to you know help a patient find a match? Most of the patients for the transplant comes to the transplant center like Rajiv Gandhi or the any other center. And then we do a search for them into the registries. So we put it into the software of the Atri. And there we find a donor. So the, the hospital and the registry has to work together to find the donor, convince the donor, getting the stem cell uh, collected, and then transport it to the transplant center. So it definitely requires a com the coordination between the two institutes uh, to, to do the transplant. Why do you think that, you know, I read it somewhere that less than 1% of Indians are registered as donors. Why do you think, like, are people unaware? Do we need to make them aware? Uh, we, the, the, we, we started late. The, the Western registries were quite old for the last many decades. We started up only 15 years back. Uh, we, have a only few, we have only few registries. Uh, people are not aware about the bone marrow transplant and the blood bone, bone marrow donor. They are available. They are aware of a blood donor, but they are not aware of a bone marrow donor or the, the stem cell donor. So they need to be made aware. As we have an inherent uh, problem of uh, why should I go and donate, similar to the blood donation, 
if you ask any patients related to donate the blood, they will suddenly disappear. So that tendency is more with the with the stem cells. Most majority of the parents do not allow their kids to donate the stem cell. They think their the stem cell will be reduced. But the stem cell donation is similar to the blood donation. You, you will have a replacement of the stem cells within a few hours. So there's a lot of uh, the awareness is not there and then a lot of fears among the Indian population about this. Uh, our media also doesn't do enough to make this happen. I think also because people assume that, you know, probably like I've heard a lot of people say that when you donate blood, your immunity reduces. So I think they get scared of the fact that if stem cells donate kar diye, to bhi immunity kam hogi, aapki body weak ho jayegi. Is it so? I would say other way around, your immunity will increase. Probably you will make a newer oh. cells, you will have a newer stem cells and you, you will have a more, a more uh, stronger stem cells or stronger red cells. Uh, so I think the donation makes you more stronger rather than uh, so who can who is eligible to become a donor? Like, what do, do you who? need to have a particular blood group similar to that of the patient, or like what is the entire you, thing? You don't have to match the blood group for the you know, this uh, stem cell donation. You need to match HLA, and uh, HLA test is done by the registries. So you don't have to pay for that. So anyone who can be a it's blood free donor, of cost. it's a free of cost. So okay. above 18 years, up to 65 years, anyone who is healthy, not on any drugs, similar to the blood donor, donors, can be a, a stem cell donor. Right. Why is that that Indian patients, so patients who are diagnosed with any blood disorder in India, they require a donor who is also of the same nationality. So if I am an Indian patient, I need an Indian donor. Why can't I have somebody from another nationality or another country? The matching is by the genetics. So the chances of finding a donor who is 100% match will be the same ethnicity. Uh, there are various ethnicities gone during the during the, our development. Uh, they, they are genetically different from us. So finding a, a donor for the Indian patient into Western world, will be, chances will be lesser. So you can still have the donor from the Western world, but the chances of finding a hundred percent match will be lower than the Indian from the Indian registry. That's why the more and more people in the from the Indian uh, descent should be the part of the registry. There's more uh, emphasis to have that bigger Indian registry rather than relying on the other other country registry. And that three is one. That three is the one of the biggest uh, Indian. To conclude it all, I'd really like you to give a message to our audience, what do you feel about the entire process and urge them to really come up and sign up. One message clearly I would like to give to the people that we need Indian donors because if I if I have a patient, uh, he needs certain uh, uh, bone marrow transplant, he doesn't have a family donor who is fully matched, we need to look for the people who are unrelated in the society. To find a donor, you need to have a bigger registry. More people have to be voluntary to donate it. You need to more and more register to the registries, willingness to go to the registries and uh, become a member of the, the, the Indian registries. That's how we can serve our own people. My dad is that a person is a lot of lives. If you donate, so you only save that particular patient's life. You save their parents, their children, their relatives, their peers. Since you are young, you have made relationships with them. So come up, sign up, be the match. It's absolutely painless and it's going to save somebody's life.